Hello everyone, it's Julie from Camellia Cross Designs. Welcome and welcome back. Uh, I'm here with the second video today. I'm going to be making some ephemera from the book that I showed in my last video. If you've not seen it yet, don't put it in shot. It's the Encyclopedia, I forgot what it's called, of <laughs> Garden Plants and Flowers. It's the Reader's Digest one, the My Happy Accident. I bought the book that was far larger than I thought it was. But it's fabulous for ephemera. Yeah, and I'm going to be making some pieces today. So I'm going to shut the book and move it. If you want to see more on the book, I'll link the other video down below. Right, so, yeah, you can see from these pages that the book's got lots of little... Yeah, it's just an A to Z. It is an encyclopedia. And, yeah, as well as having the photos, it's got these little black and white drawings of plants. So, I've gone ahead, and so you don't have to watch me cut all these out, I've gone and cut some out. I don't know what happened there, I forgot I was cutting it with white edges. Yeah, and I just think they look so cute. I mean, you don't have to make them look like stamps, you don't have to make them look like tea cards, but you can if you want. Oh, they're just journaling cards, aren't they? You can pop them anywhere you want. You could make altered paper clips. I'm just going to stick some on some tea dyed card today and see what they look like all linked up so i'm going to move these pages out of the way i got these in case yeah i fluff some up and i don't yeah right here's my tea dyed card two sheets of a4 so i'm going to start off by inking the edges of these if you can't tell from the book how big these are i'll just show you that measures one and three quarters nearly by just about two. Yeah, so they're cute and the dinky. And I'm gonna try inking with yeah. I'm using my old favourite, my distress oxide walnut stain. There's hardly any ink on it, and I think that's doing it nicely. I'll try one inked and I'll try one not inked and see how they look. And I'm not sure what is going to stick this paper best. I've never really stuck large areas, large areas of this semi-shiny paper, shall we call it. I think I'm going to start. I don't want something that's going to wrinkle it, which I think PVA will do. So I'm going to try my Kalal, yeah, for starters, before I move on to anything more expensive. So, come here. I don't, I'm not confident on glue stick, but I will try one with glue stick, with it being semi-shiny. That's my new word at day, semi-shiny, semi-matte. Right. And I might as well make use of straight edges on card, aren't I? I'll stick this one, move all the sheets card for now, woman, just move it. I want to stick it down in this corner. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to like the colour of tea dyed card with this. I don't, I honestly don't know. That seems to have stuck nice. I've not put so much on that it's squidged out too much. A little bit squidged at top. Should rub off here. I'm going to get my glue rubber out. So I'm feeling I'm going to make it, get a lot of use out of it today. Is it already out and I've lost it? That's a possibility. Here it is. It's still on my desk. God, that's, that's the only thing I don't like about um, using glue like this on a small thing. But that's that's fine. Now, shall I be brave and use my scissors? Shall I? But, do you know what? I'm going to... I might stick... These are all the same width. Well, they're not all. Some of them are. Because I cut them from the same part in the book. That's a different width. What about this one? Is there only two of those? I knew there were another. It's there hiding underneath. Yeah. So I'm gluing them on. So I've just got a little border. So let's ink another one. I could have gone ahead and inked them. But there's only so much you can do before your video ink them. I mean, I could have gone ahead and finished it. And just showed you a finished thing. And said, there you go. Jobs are good. Un. But <laughs> that wouldn't be any fun, would it? I wouldn't have time to waffle. There's been absolutely no waffling time left. Right. Let's try one with glue stick. 
grab a glue stick using my favourite Elmer's Extreme oh glue book I used up my glue book grab one of these label backing sheets oh <laughs> that honest that what other side of the page I thought I'd cut it wrong then so we'll see how Elmer's stands up on this semi shiny paper um, that's about right I need to leave enough room to have an edge on both of them don't I you know it seems to stick all right I think I'm do you know it seems to stick really well well I've used it on to be honest I have used it on paper that's nearly this shiny so yeah I like that I'm gonna go with Elmer's Wee. I'll obviously not be putting these in anything until I've left them a few weeks to see how well they stand up. I mean, I could use a dry adhesive. I've just bought one of those, um, I'll show it you, dry adhesive rollers. I mean, I have had the cheaper ones before and I didn't really like them. I used to have a refillable one. Well, I still have it, but and I've totally forgot the name of it again. It's a quite a well-known brand. Oh, what's it called? I can't remember. I bought it off Ideal World yonks ago, about 20 years ago. And the refills have got so expensive, I thought I'd give this new one a whirl, and it's the Crafter's Companion. Uh, I know Tanya, Tatty Treasure, uses a dry adhesive roller when she's doing anything on glassine bags. So, yeah, I'll let you know how I'll get on with that as well. I've been putting a few envelopes together with it today, ready for orders. And, yeah, this, this seems to be in one piece. Right, I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut with... i tell you what, let's put a lid on that ink. And then I won't dip my paper in it. Let's put a lid on glue stick. And let's put a pin in that. I really shouldn't be left to craft on my own, me. I need supervising. Right. I'm gonna Ooh. I say I can't cut straight lines, but if I've got a straight line to follow, I'm not too bad. And I am following the straight line at the edge because yes, I cut these out with my paper trimmer and I use that light board again. I put my paper trimmer on top of the light board. <laughs> they perhaps don't make these light boards with a view to you putting a paper trimmer on top of them, but if it works and I could see exactly where to cut right that's that I'm really liking the look of them that's that I'm thinking now maybe I should have just cut the flower out I don't know let's ink this and see there's something that I'm not liking about this and I don't know what it is I think, to be quite honest, it's the fact that that's white and that's very tea dyed. I think I may like it better on cream card rather than tea dyed. So I'm going to grab a sheet of cream card. Well, I'm not going to. I'm going to grab some offcuts. It's got loads of offcuts. I used to at one point buy offcuts and sell them on eBay, going back a lot of years, from a card card manufacturer. They used to sell their offcuts in like giant bags, multiples of kilograms. I didn't get that very straight, did I? And yeah, not everyone's like me, are they? I know Tanya's not. They don't want loads of everything. They just want a little bit. So I used to bag them up into smaller bags, 100, 200 grams and sell them on eBay. They used to sell like hotcakes. And I still got quite a few left. The things like you know when they manufacture aperture greeting cards well a lot of them are just squares and rectangles and they want middles from them or off cuts from rolls and sheets so i'm going to grab some of those where are you here we go right that's some they came in a bag as off cuts sometimes corners were a bit bent 
Now this is like a parchment card. It's not white, it's not cream, it's like an off-white. And I've got a feeling that these might look a lot nicer. There's something I'm not liking about them on tea dye. And I don't know what it is. I think I'm going to like it much better on this. Yeah, and I think these are going to be a manageable size. So let's, maybe I need to ink it up with something lighter. Shall we get a whirl with vintage photo? I don't need something that dark, do I? Let's try vintage photo. Ordinary distress ink. And see what that looks like. I mean, I might come in and stamp over them. Now, if I'm going to make them look like faux postage stamps, I should have done serrated edges. Maybe that's what I need. Maybe I'll give that a whirl as well. But I think I like that better already. I'm going to stick that on with glue stick. I'm working in a complete and utter mess today. I've been doing too much. Doing too many different things. Jumping about from one thing to another. I've been like a cat on an octin roof. Doing a bit of this, bit of that, bit of other. And I've had the most fantabulous happy mail that I haven't finished opening. I opened the box and I've looked at one thing off the lovely Deborah. Thank you so much, Deborah. Uh, I'll be messaging you later. It's like, wow, 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 and wow again. Deborah is the, she's the most lovely lady. I have ever, ever not met. <laughs> that sounds mad, that, doesn't it? In this day and age, you're allowed to have friends who you've not met in person yet, aren't you? Because I would class Deborah as a friend now. She's been so encouraging, so supportive. And, yeah, I just don't, I just don't have words. I don't have words. I'm not a flowery, gushy person with my words. Right, that looks so much better. I don't know, it is. I didn't like it on tea dyed card. And now I'm going to ink it up with uh, an ink. No, it's not tea dye, it's vintage photo. Now that I like. Let's do those edges. Really good. Right, next I'm going to get my pinking sheer scissors out. My paper ones. Yeah, I was brought, I brought up by a dressmaker, not a professional dressmaker, but if you used your paper, your fabric scissors on paper, yeah, my mum would not have been impressed. So yeah, I really like that colour much better. So let's get that again, and I'm going to need to stick it on, leaving more space this time, aren't I, so that I can get round it with pinking shears. I'm going to, do you know what? I'm going to try this one. This one, I didn't cut the white edges off. Well, I did cut the white edges off. It's another one of them. What would I say if I could speak, days? There we go. I'm going to use the glue stick. I know it was, it's, yeah. Everyone's done faux postage stamps a long time ago, but there might be some of you who've not seen them, or, yeah, perhaps you've not made them out of book pages or perhaps you like watching the same thing again and again i know i do i really do oh, is that going to be enough room it's gonna have to be isn't it it's gonna have to be <laughs> that really is stick down go on quite vicious that one too i can't get my pinking shears in there right let's give this a whirl get a little bit hung up on wanting the corners to look nice when I'm using pinking shears. I really should just not be too fussy. I'm quite liking this. I'm going to have to get my postage stamp stamps out, I think, for this. Oh yeah, that definitely needs stamping. That's a stamp, that is. That really is a stamp. And I don't know what ink I'm going to need on this with it being Semi shiny, semi matte. <laughs> I get sicker in my cellar. 
that does give me a look cute like a stamp. I'm wanting to get a real stamp out now and compare. Right, let's get me postage stamp dies out. I do always keep them in this drawer inside me because they're really handy for everything. That's my little set I've got. And then I've got another set here that the lovely Deborah got me. Come on, come out. I know you're hiding in there. Can, can you hear me? I've got too many stamp sets in my, my drawer now at the side of me to find what I'm looking for. Oh my word, amount of time it would take me to find those stamps were just ridiculous. So I just paused you. I'm back and chopped you out. I've chopped, not chopped you out, I've chopped a bit of the video. Here we go, the stamp set that the lovely Deborah got me. So I'm going to do a bit of stamping on this now to make it look like a real proper vintage stamp. And I'm going to use this one. I like this one because it's just the lines. Yeah, you can put them anywhere you want then. Right, let's get... Uh, oh, itchy nose. I'm not fibbing, honestly. Honestly, I'm not. I really am going to get something to rest on. To stamp on. I'm just going to use a piece of paper. Yep, that'll do. Come on, paper. Oh, it's bright white again. It's a bit harsh on your eyes, that. Do you know what? I need to just get some more label back in. Do you know what I really need to do? I need to get organised before I start doing a video. That would really help. Right, here we go. There's my stamp <laughs> that I've cut out. Here are my stamps. Now I'm going to fish for three hours to find a stamp block. Here we go. I get very... Do you know if some things are not where it should be? I get all that... I won't rest until I find it. Right, I've got this. And I'm going to go for the... I'm going to go for me Timothy Holtz. I'm going to use Archival. And I'm going to use Black. Yeah, this should work. It's permanent waterproof ink. So... Ink her up. Children screaming outside. <laughs> Sound like they're in a screaming contest. Right, which way do these flowers go? That's it. And, do you know, I'm now wondering where the postmark actually goes on a stamp. Well, that one goes there. Cause, oh, it's stuck to my stamp now, look. Oh, there we go. I like it. I do, and I'm going to put that across it. So let's get a different stamp block, and then I don't need to keep switcherooing them about. Will that stick? Yeah. They're, not, they're old, these stamps. And if they're not 100% clean on this side, they don't like to stick. Again, I should have cleaned them. And then I should have... It's not going to want to stick. So do you know what I'm going to do to it? I think I've done this before. I'm going to put some of this on. Take, take the lid off, it works a treat. And I'm going to put it on my stamp block. <laughs> That's me all over that. I'm just going to touch that with my finger to check if it's sticky. I've just put permanent adhesive on it. Why would it not be sticky? There we go. I didn't have any temporary to hand, so I've used permanent. It will come off because it's plastic to plastic. Nothing's permanent on plastic unless you get solvent glue. But I digress again. Crack on with what you're doing, woman. Right. And I want that one there. I like it. So there we have. It's a large stamp, but there's bits of glue on it. Stamps can be that large, can't they? I really like that. I do. So, that's that. That's that. That's now what I'm calling a square tea card. We can have square tea cards. And I want to make more stamp ones. I just want to mess and I want to play and see what I can come up with. Oh, I will show you one thing before we move on. Right, do you know all the little black and white flowers? Let me get a full page to show you. Like these. <sighs> yeah. 
I wanted to cut it out, the one I got with a circle. I had the one and a half inch circle, it was too big. I then tried the one inch circle, which obviously was a smidgen too small. So what I have done is I've ordered from Amazon, I've ordered the one and a quarter inch circle punch, the EK Success one. And that has been paid for by my very kind uh, ladies who've bought me coffees, uh, Deborah, Lynn, and a couple more anonymous ones. Uh, I'm not going to give, all I've got is the email address, there were no message, so thank you very much, you know who you are. It's very much appreciated. I do tend to like to spend me buying me a coffee money on the supplies that I wouldn't otherwise go for. Not that I don't want them, it's just, I tend to think of wants and needs, you, you you know what I mean by that. Do I need it? No. Do I want it? Yes. Will it be useful? Yes. How useful will it be? And then you've got that sliding scale, aren't you, of how useful it's going to be that takes it from a want to a need. And things hover in the middle sometimes and that's what I spend, me buy me a coffee money on. And then I can let you know how well they perform, can't I? Some perform well. Some not so well. <laughs> I'm beginning to regret buying that envelope punch board. Not envelope one, tag one. Yeah, envelope punch board, best thing since sliced bread. Tag punch board, meh, not, not so much. Right, shut up and craft. I'm going to make a couple more of these square stamps. And do you know what? We can have green beans on a stamp if we want green beans on a stamp. I've noticed a lot of people making these, I know Kayung, uh, or Kayung Shotwell, who has a YouTube channel, has done, I'm sure Kayung's done one, was it a farmer's journal, a farmer's market thing, yeah, so, in a farmer's market you're going to find runner beans, Let's cut. I mean I could cut my onions, yeah, let's do onions and runner beans. There's no law against it, is there? I know I cut loads out ready, but what would the fun be in not using these big scissors? So, I hope I've finished <laughs> anything I was saying. Yeah, I noticed on my last video I'd started saying something, completely not even finished saying it. So I just put some, yeah, I put the answer on the screen. Answers on a postcard, please. So, which onions? You can have a you can have a big tall oblong stamp, can't you? Or even a rectangle one. So yeah, we're gonna have onions and runner beans. We're gonna have a garden full. That's that. I mean, you could build you could build these up into anything, couldn't you? I've already said altered paper clips. You could then you could make them into clusters. We could just pile them on some scrap paper and card and turn them into clusters. I didn't ink the last one, did I, for the postage stamp? Didn't really need it, but I've left a bit of white on the edge of this one, so that's going to cover it up. Right, let's stick these on here, and I'm going to attack them with pinking shears again. So we're going to glue on that side, and we're going to ink on the other side glue stick oh look lids off ready i planned it that way of course i did <laughs> oh, that's the kind of things my kids would say that you haven't made your bed oh it's it's ready for when i get in it yeah my kids have got high sleeper beds i really don't miss the stress of telling them off for not making the bed I remember I was very good me when I was younger to <laughs> when my mum said things I'd just I'd find research that would prove that doing it my way was yeah the best and I did once find some research apparently it is healthier not to make your bed to, to air it not all day of course but if you're at school you can't come home and make it can you so yeah you shouldn't make your bed as soon as you get out of it can't remember why now. I've had a few sleeps since then. Right, put the runner beans on. 
Look what's is that? That's either somebody's hand or a parsnip. I'm not quite sure which. That's definitely a hand, isn't it? My fingers don't look like parsnips. Right, cut this. I really, I could get really addicted to this. I never did these when they were in thing. Mind you, I don't know. I've only been junk journaling about three. It's about three years now, so. Do things keep going round and round? Are we all going to forget about something for a year or so? And then are we all going to do it again thinking it's brand new? I don't know. I don't know. But I often say, if I could remember everything I know, I'd be a genius. <laughs> everything I once knew, should I say. Yeah, I would. I was when I can't remember things. I just that's my brain. It's it's finely tuned to only remember the essentials. It's not full of rubbish. Yeah. Right, where's me daub gone? That's daub. I've n while I talked then, I cut round these without being quite so particular about how my corners were going to end up looking. Because I don't think the corner police are going to come and set that. It cannot be a postage stamp because the corner is not perfect. No, no it's not going to happen. Oh, right. Get my stampy one back. I'm going to do my stamps a bit different. How did it up for... Oh, do you know, I really love that. I really do. So, shall we have the... We'll have the onion sideways. And we'll have the yeah we'll have the beans sideways, and we'll ink them up and stamp. Yeah, I'm gonna go ink pad to stamp because that way I automatically put the lid back on. Apparently, it's supposed to be a better way of stamping up, inking up, stamping up. Yeah, free ad right there. And I want it there. I'm going to hold it on a second or two, although that's the other beauty of making faux stamps. Quite often, they don't stamp properly, do they, when they're running them through the machines? Oh, there were a funny story in news this week. I cannot remember, for the life of me, which uh, area it was. <laughs> Someone has sent a letter to the leader of the council about... It was quite an important matter, and rather than using a real stamp... They've cut out a little picture of the council leader and put it on the postcard. But what's even funnier is Royal Mail processed it and it got stamped like this. And um, yeah, so yeah, there was a story there. Then there was the comment from Royal Mail going on about it being an offence to uh, use a counterfeit postage stamp or try and reuse a postage stamp. It's like whatever. Get a sense of humour. I thought that were quite funny. Right, where's my ink gum? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, beware. Don't use any of these as real postage stamps because you could end up in prison, literally. We could end up in prison for doing this. Yeah, could we? That'd be interesting. Is making the false postage stamp the offence or is sticking it on a letter the offence? I don't know. I feel quite dangerous. Yeah, ooh. Very dangerous, I am. Dangerous Walker, that's my name. And that one's going to go there. I like the look of them being off the edge. I'm liking, oh, that's lovely, I like it. Oops, <laughs> I put glue on the other side of this, then I put it on my mat. Yeah, what happened there? What happened next? Do you know, I used to... I'm not mad keen on sports, but I used to absolutely love that programme, A Question of Sport. And I also like the one that um, James, what's his name, does. <laughs> I don't know his name. I forgot his name. Uh, he does the Late Late Show as well, doesn't he, in the US? You know, I mean, James Corden, they're a league of their own. Because they are such funny shows, you, you forget that they're even about sport. Right. What am I going to do next? I need to... There was one more thing I wanted to try. And I think I forgot where it is. Hmm. So we've got some little cards. We've got 
some faux postage stamps. Oh, I wanted to make one look like a tea card, didn't I? Yeah, so I wanted a tea card shaped one. Did I cut one out ready? So there's my real tea card, my little butterfly. I think that fits in really well with these. Yeah? It's like, which is the odd one out? Who's the imposter? Who's the imposter because it's not fake? Which is the genuine one? Don't have a tea card size one there. And all these seem purple and I've, everything I've done is pink and purple. In fact, this is a, it's a different colour. It's more of a bluebell colour. Yeah, so I'm going to do this one. I'm going to cut this one out. Oh, glue sticks fell over and it didn't have a lid on. Icky thump. Right, yeah, I'm going to do that one. Is it a bluebell? I'm calling it a bluebell because it's a blue flower. That's a bit, <laughs> that's a bit like what car were it? I don't know it were red. Uh, it's, yeah, it's not a bluebell. That's all I'm going to tell you. Because like I said, I'll tell you what, go all the way down this strip. You don't need to be so precise that you cut them out with your paper trimmer. Scissors will do. There you go. So I spent all that time cutting them out with a paper trimmer over a light board. And now I'm just hacking away at them with scissors. So the proof's going to be in the pudding, isn't it? If the scissors way looks as good, I'll be like, yeah. I'll be selling my paper trimmer on eBay. No, I won't quite go that far. It's still needed. Right. Oh, there we go. Hold this just to get to that one. And there we go. And there we go. I don't want the name on. I just want it to look like a tea card. There you go. That looks like a tea card. So this one's just going to get backed onto pay onto card. And I'm not going to leave a border. I'm going to put it up flush like that. Because it doesn't need a border. To look like a tea card. So, here you have it. Faux tea card or fake tea card, imitation tea card, replica tea card, loads of names from. <laughs> why? Why did I just become? Why did I just become a walking thesaurus? Well, actually, if I'm going to be accurate. I was a sitting thesaurus. Oh, I did cut that straight because it's actually. Looks straight when I put it on a piece of straight card ish. Right, there we go. Get your scissors out again, woman. And I'll ink this once I've cut. Things are sticking. It's a yeah, funny thing that about glue, isn't it? It's sticky. I'm ready to clean my scissors with an alcohol wipe. Right, there we go. That's... Spot the difference? Mine's bigger. Yeah, we'll just put a little bit of vintage photo on to give it that authentic look. I mean, I think these started off white before they went yellow. With age that one looks like it's been in an album at some point so there we have it vintage tea card faux stamps and some little thing on the whatsets so yeah that that really does stand up as a faux tea card doesn't it and a faux stamp here we go and just because I can, and I can't resist it, yeah, open the correct drawer lady and you'll find what you're looking for. I just want to punch a hole in it and put an eyelet in it. That's a hole. Grab your eyelets. I'm going 
to put a gold one in. I'm liking gold ones at the minute. Probably would have looked better if I'd got it in the corner of the picture, but hey ho. There we go. You can pop it on anything then with an eyelet in. You don't have to put an eyelet in. But yeah, I'm really, really pleased with that. How many of those can I make out of that book? I really could sit here until, yeah, I could sit here till the next millennium, I think, making these with the amount I've got in that book. So I think some of those book pages, I may have to fold them to fit them in. No, I won't. They'll be fine. I think some of those are going to get put in my mixed packs that I put on Etsy with the straw paper, the piano paper and the book pages. Yeah, they're going to have to, aren't they? I might just do some packs just from that book or I really will be using them forever. Yeah. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it's give you some ideas. Yeah. So, yeah, if you see that book hanging about, uh, yeah, look how useful it can be. I think they look quite authentic. That does. I think that's a better tea card than the real one. I really do. Yeah. So, thank you very much for joining me. And I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.